Welcome to This Week in Health IT Events, where we amplify great ideas with interviews from the floor. My name is Bill Russell, healthcare CIO coach and creator of This Week in Health IT, a set of podcasts and videos dedicated to developing the next generation of health leaders. We want to thank our founding channel sponsors who make this content possible, Health Lyrics and VMware. If you want to be a part of our mission to develop health leaders, go to thisweekhealth.com sponsor for more information. This episode is sponsored by Health Lyrics. When I became a CIO, I was really overwhelmed at first, and one of the first things I did was to sign a CIO coach to walk with me through the journey. This was someone who had wisdom that can only be gained through years of experience. It was invaluable to my success in the role, and I now coach CIOs through Health Lyrics. If you want to learn more, visit healthlyrics.com or drop me a note at bill at thisweekinhealthit.com. Over the next three weeks, we have a huge treat for you. I'm really excited about it. Uh, I just got back from the Chimefall Forum in Scottsdale, which was a great event, and we caught up with 12 active CIOs from various size health systems and asked them to take a look back at 2019 and a look forward at 2020. Uh, You're going to hear what they're excited to have accomplished last year and what they're looking forward to accomplish next year. I asked each of them the same eight questions, and I think you're going to be fascinated to hear the similarities and the differences based on where they're at, geography, and other things. Each of these interviews is about 10 minutes long, so you can listen to them really quick, and some of you listen at one and a half times speed, so it's going to go like that. Uh, We're going to publish one a day uh, with a few Newsday episodes sprinkled in through the end of November, so check back every day for the next episode, and don't forget to look back to see if you missed any. Mark Amy is the CIO for Alameda Health System in Oakland, and they just finished a significant epic implementation up there. And uh, Mark and I were actually talking before we we come on the air, and we were talking about how he, I was really impressed with how they use social media to to really share what was going on in the uh, in the implementation, and I almost felt like I was a part of the team. I got to see the camaraderie and see, you know, people working through challenges and, uh, you know, the go live, the events and those kind of things. It, it, he really did a great job at that. Uh, we get a chance to sit down and talk about the eight questions, and I really enjoyed it. I hope you enjoy as well. So here we are from the uh, Chimefall Forum 2019, and we're uh, meeting with CIOs, and we're, we're running through a handful of questions. I'm joined with uh, Mark Amy. Thanks for, thanks for coming on board. I appreciate Yo, it. No, pleasure. Thank uh, you for having me. CI, uh, newly, well, not newly. You've been there for about a year, right? About a year, yeah. Just At, a little while. Alameda? Correct, Alameda Health System. Okay. And uh, I, I saw the I saw the social media. You just completed your epic implementation. Uh, yes, I, I don't know if the uh, social media was a good thing or a bad thing, but it was a thing. <laughs> well, I mean, you were uh, a lot of it was was celebrating your team, so. right? Which is part of the role of the CIO is to is to there's so many points where there's so much pressure, and it's to it's to just lighten the load of the team and and uh, and celebrate the accomplishments absolutely no and i i'm blessed with a great team actually a combination of my own team we call it the sapphire team as you might have seen from the video that we had out there but uh, the sapphire team and then epic themselves they're a great partner and then we had several uh, partners on board with us as well that uh, really helped with that did, so. did you inherit that or did because you've only been there for a year. Yeah, so the Epic contract was actually done when I came on board. And uh, so the, the, the uh, contract was uh, completed, the uh, timeline has been set, the scope has been set. And so I came on board uh, for, the exit, for the execution piece. So um, it's one of those, you knew the risks involved, you bought your tickets. So, well, yes. <laughs> yeah. But you always find a few things along the way. Uh, too, yeah. so. No, that's fun. Um, so we, we only have about 10 minutes with you, so let's get to the questions. Uh, you know, the first one is, how have you seen the role of the CIO change over the last maybe 12 months? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's really been an evolution, and I don't know if it's been in the last 12 months, but certainly an evolution on what's going on. Uh, there's really three things that I'm kind of seeing. One of them is I think the CIO has to be a lot more of a CFO now, especially with the move into the cloud. Uh, you know, you think about so much of the decisions we make now are not necessarily technology, they're cost performance. Yeah. Is it cheaper in the cloud? Is it cheaper locally? Is it cheaper in a SaaS um, operation? So certainly the uh, financial end of things. I'd say the second is really understanding workflows. And you know, as a non-clinician, I feel like I sometimes have to work twice as hard to figure out what my clinicians are doing, you know, as well as revenue cycle, of course, uh, on that. 
what uh, what our clinicians are doing, what the uh, workflows are. And I'd say the third is really driving towards lean, and that's a journey I personally started to uh, follow over the last few years. But you know, Gimba, the ITIL framework, those sorts of things, I think are really game changers for us. Yes, I, I really resonate with the CIO, CFO linkage, and actually you're the first one to, to mention that. But I was just in an AWS session, and people were talking about, you know, how is cloud going to save me money? And and so much of the conversation centered around, you know, capex versus opex. And I mean, you really have to understand how money flows. I was in a session too, and it just became consumed. And uh, you know, some of uh, my uh, here and my CIO brethren and sister, and, uh, they just they were uh, they were trying to work with their CFOs, and obviously it wasn't wasn't going well. And uh, so you got to figure that part out and, and help uh, help uh, all of that. So you got, you had the EMR implement. Um, what are three priorities maybe for next year that your that health IT is going to support going into? I assume so, it's optimization. Uh, optimization, optimization, <laughs> optimization, optimization. Yeah, that's, so, that's probably the right answer. So, if I thought about it, uh, yeah, it's, you know we're we're stabilizing. I, I put loosely a time frame in on uh, stabilization through the end of this uh, calendar year, and then the next six months on just a very focused optimization. Obviously, I need to get our governance uh, structure stood up during that time. The big focus for us with our behavioral health hospital is actually going to be streamlining the uh, behavioral health workflows that we have and what we're doing in those areas. That's, uh, that's actually going to be really critical for us. And then lastly, and kind of a deferred project, is um, time tracking. And we have, I, I believe, a tremendous opportunity as I've been looking at the data around overtime, time management, you know, in, in all areas, uh, you know, all of our operational areas. And so. You know, when you think about that, there's some savings for us, but there's also patient safety and ultimately employee morale. Um, yeah. and you get people to working uh, reasonable work rates. So let's let's focus those in a little bit and let's talk about uh, patient experience. What's in, in your primarily Oakland, Alameda? Yeah, uh, Alameda County. So Oakland, you know, think of Oakland, uh, uh, the and, city and of Oakland, running. that area. So yeah. if I were to go to the, the patients in that community and say, hey, here's what you have to look forward to, what's the one thing that you would point to? Yeah, so that's actually exciting and sad all at the same time. So the sad part is we were actually, we have a patient experience group with some patients on and we're talking with them pre-epic. And there's many things obviously that we need to improve as an organization on this, but we actually have one of our patients, she gets on a bus, comes to us to schedule her appointment because doing it over the phone just is so cumbersome for her. And so obviously there's some work we need to do that's not just technology uh, related in that. Um, but that, you know, when I, when I think about this, this person obviously not not in good health because they're doing reoccurring uh, visits uh, with us and they're having to get on the bus to, uh, to come uh, make their appointments. So you know, I think the patient portal, uh, my chart specific for us, is going to be a game changer. I use it personally as a patient, uh, in fact I won't see a doctor that doesn't use it. And um, I, um, I've already, I'm trading notes now with um, with my doctor, Dr. Jenny, um, on, uh, on my chart, it's awesome. And um, I, um, I, I think it's going to be a game changer for our, uh, for our patients. It's also interesting because with the demographic that we work with, so many um, underserved um, uh, you know, folks that are you know, struggling either with home needs, with food needs, other things like that. And But one of the things that the homeless population actually has, they may not have a home, they may not have a computer, but they usually have a smartphone. And so it's a great way to be able to help them start to manage their own health uh, as they're in and out of our emergency department and other areas like that. Well, that's exciting. And uh, you now have a platform to, to build a lot yeah. of that on. Yeah, we've, uh, we already had our uh, first sign-ups. We're up to about 2,500 sign-ups at this point. And this actually sounds like a stupid question at this point. What, you know, one initiative that you believe is going to materially imp improve the clinician experience. You know, it's going to be workflow optimization uh, in that. And there's three big areas that we're really focused on. Uh, behavioral health, which I already mentioned, but also our OB area is another area that I think we can do some streamlining. That we've got a great chair there, uh, Dr. Smith, that uh, I enjoy working with. And then um, also our surgery, our uh, surgery areas. I think there's some work that we can do there and really um, streamlining that process. So let me ask you, I mean, so, uh, you know, a lot of implementations have happened before yours. Did you find like they came with a significant playbook before they got to you? Yeah, yes and no. So th there's a few interesting things on that. Um, this is actually my, I was counting it up, this is actually my seventh uh, electronic medical record implementation. I did four Cerner ones and three Epic ones. So, and I will say this has been my smoothest one. Uh, so I don't know if it's a combination of luck or uh, you know, some wisdom maybe uh, with age. Um, I, I think truly a part of it is the systems are getting better. So we went very close with Epic Foundation for the most part. That really helped us out uh, a lot. And, and the Epic Foundation 
management system is uh, significantly more built out than it was even a couple of years ago um, with what they had. And I haven't implemented Cerner in a while now, but I know they've evolved their uh, foundation systems as well. But I think that's that's going to be key uh, as uh, organizations move forward and um, you know, and driving costs down. You know, a lot of organizations now are doing this back to foundation move um, with uh, with their EMR, and I think that's going to be important as we start start to standardize how we buy care across the U.S. Yeah, plus you're going to quarterly updates right out of the chute. Uh, unfortunately, I think on that, I might skip the first one. <laughs> first we haven't decided. <laughs> Just give people a little bit of a break. Exactly. What, what's, your, I, I, what's the thing you're most proud of your health IT team for this year? You know, the implementation. Uh, they really, I think where I saw everybody come together was um, at the command center. But there was, you know, that was the uh, icing on the cake, if you want to call it. I and mean, there was many long hours by our team, um, you know, my leadership team, by the staff themselves. Our analysts are phenomenal. Our desktop team worked like every weekend for like two months before that to get our technical dress rehearsal in. Our analysts did all kinds of um, um, you know, moving mountains on the build. I, I really, really impressed. Proud of, uh, of the team. Yeah, I, I, I joke and like you know you knew the risk involved, but the, the other thing is uh, you also know that going through those things really builds a team. Yeah, there's you overcome an awful lot of challenges. It's very compressed. Everyone's pulling for each other. Everyone's relying on each other. It's it's a it's a really neat experience. No, it, it really was, and, and we had a good time in our um, in our command center. And you know, a few of the pictures you saw, but uh, you know what we didn't have there is we sang happy birthday. Several people had their birthdays during the command center, uh, so we had sang happy birthday to all of them. I managed to fall out of the chair I was standing on during <laughs> one of those, so that was, luckily there was no camera going. <laughs> uh, again, part of the role, uh, comedic relief, I guess. As well. uh, you said our, our clumsiness, uh, yeah, clumps. <laughs> so. You know, I had this question as missed opportunity for 2019, and, and I. I don't like. I, I didn't like the way it was going, and I guess what I would say is, you know, what's one thing you wish you had had more time to spend on in 2019 that you're going to have to hopefully get to in 2020? Uh, honestly, everything else. So we got Epic in, but you know that, that comes with a But cost. It, really, it really consumes. Everything. Yeah, you, you know, you don't really do any other projects during that. You know, I mean, we did a handful of moves, we did you know some other things like that. But the and, and in um, kudos to my organization, they really focused on this. Our CEO, all the way through the entire organization, focused on uh, the Sapphire project. It, it's our largest project we've ever done. Um, in part because we don't own our own uh, buildings, the county does. And so when you take the construction out of it, this is you know two hundred million dollar project. It's a significant project, but it was so consuming for us that there is many other things. And, you know, if you think about implementation and staying current as a competitive race, you. we were, you know, sidelined, if you want to call it that, on this very important piece. It'll help us leapfrog, but we've yeah, got yeah. a lot of other things now. You've, you've, got, to you've got to put the foundation in. It's why, you know, the, the first year when I went to where I was a CIO, uh, we focused on the infrastructure. Well, I came in following uh, six outages to the data center. You know, you don't get to do anything as a CIO until you don't get to pass go unless the network works. You're absolutely right. And then, and then you just start moving up the stack. Yeah. And, and frankly, I've got some of that that we still need to do. We are very, as a department, very customer centric, customer focused, which is awesome. We're very process light, though. And so, it, what it means is that everything we're doing with our customer becomes kind of a heroic effort rather than a repeatable process. And so, part of that is just us retooling a little bit on how we do these processes, building in your know, solid help desk and all of the other infrastructure pieces there. And we've got all the right pieces, we just need to put it together. Yeah, my VP of Infrastructure and Operations used to always say, we're trying to go from hero to NASA. NASA is all about the team, no one's more important, we're all putting somebody on the, it's about the mission. That's exactly it. And uh, he, he was always saying that, because when he came in, we had all these people like, oh, I worked through the night to do this, and he would sit back and go, why did you have to work through the night? And they would look at him like indignant, like, what do you mean? I, I fixed it. It's like, all right, well, let's step back and make sure that no one ever has to work through the night to do that again. Bill, I actually had an early boss. Um, you may even know him um, from back in the day, but uh, he actually, I, I worked through early in my uh, career, worked through the night with my technical team on something. And I came in the next day and I was exhausted and I was expecting a big, you know, go Mark. And uh, he's like, you know, I appreciate the fact that you uh, fixed the issue, but I really wish you wouldn't have been here all night. I <laughs> really wish you would have prevented the issue. And it was kind of an aha moment for me uh, on the whole thing. I'm kind of informing my own uh, thought process on how do you become, you know, I, I love the saying, going from uh, hero to NASA. It's, that's great. So, um, so this is sort of an industry perspective. What area would you like to see the industry really uh, produce more innovation? Yeah. 
So, just having come off of Go Live, I would love to see even more of a playbook on how to implement uh, EMRs. I know that's uh, maybe a little bit self-centered uh, you know, from where, where I just was, but we spend so much time, so much money on on this, and you know, in taking our best practice and putting it into the system. I really, I, and I think Epic, and I think the other EMRs are doing it as well. So it's not just uh, yeah. just them, but I think the uh, electronic medical record industry. We need to continue to standardize how we practice and really say this is the best practice across the uh, um, across the industry, not just for Alameda Health System or you yeah. know. Uh, and there's still a lot of that work to do with M and A and stuff going on. Absolutely, the absolutely. Yeah. And the final question is: uh, again, we talked to our users, and they said, "Hey, could you ask these CIOs, you know, what roles they're going to be hiring in?" I think people want to know. Well, I've got an open position for VP of Applications right now. I'll put a plug in for that. <laughs> so, so I'm uh, I'm looking for that. Um, I was I was thinking a little bit about this as we kind of retool our organization. You know, analysts are going to be key to us um, uh, with uh, with knowledge, but it's it's really yeah it, that's kind of a generic. So I'm looking for people that are that have a strong um, understanding of business. So if it's clinical, ideally you come out of a clinical space or you have a strong working knowledge yeah. of that. If it's revenue cycle, you've worked in that space, you really understand. Obviously, you got to understand the applications, and there's knowledge and certifications uh, there to, to make that happen. Um, work ethic is uh, is uh, key, and I think the last thing, kind of the secret sauce, is customer service. And that's uh, you know, you kind of know that, but you, yeah. as, as a person, you either have it or you don't have it to a certain degree. But we are so much more of a service oriented uh, organization at this point, and I think that's just crucial to hire for service. There's very few, few roles, even in IT anymore, where you just sit behind your computer and don't interact. You're absolutely right. It's a it's a team sport. Mark, thank you for taking the time. I appreciate, appreciate you having me, Bill. So Thanks. thank you. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. Remember to check back often as we are going to drop an episode a day for most of November of 2019. Following that, please come back every Friday for more great interviews with influencers. And don't forget, every Tuesday, we take a look at the news which impacts health IT. If you want to support the fastest growing podcast in the health IT space, here's a few ways that you can do that. The first... Share it with a peer, share it with a friend, share it with somebody who's working right there next to you. Number two, sign up for insights and staff meeting. These are services designed to help you in your career. Number three, interact with our social media content on Twitter and LinkedIn. Number four, post or repost our content. And number five, always send me feedback. Bill at thisweekinhealthit.com. Your insights continue to shape the channel. This show is a production of This Week in Health IT. For more great content, you can check out our website, at thisweekhealth.com or our YouTube channel. Special thanks to our sponsors, VMware and Health Lyrics, for choosing to invest in developing the next generation of health leaders. Thanks for listening. That's all for now.